Welcome back to Photoshop and today we're going to take a look at the difference between hue saturation and selective color inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now this is a question I get all the time asked, what's the difference between hue saturation and selective color? And which one should I use when? Well, it really depends on personal preference and what you are doing. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a detailed look at all the adjustments inside of hue saturation and we're gonna take a look at what is similar and what is different inside of each of these adjustment layers inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is where these are located. Now if you come up here and you look right here, this is hue saturation. And if you come down here, this is selective color. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a hue saturation adjustment layer, as you can see down here, and it brings it up in the properties panel. Now the first option that we have inside of hue saturation is the ability to adjust all the colors at the same time. We are able to adjust the red, the yellow, the green, the cyan, the blue, magenta, all at the same time. So I can come up here, and make the hue or the color of that color completely different. And it's adjusting all the colors at the same time. I don't think this is the most useful function inside of Photoshop. Actually, it's something that I rarely, if ever, have used. It can be helpful to lower all the saturation of everything in the image or kind of increase the saturation. But that's about it as far as what I've used hue saturation for. Now I'm a photographer, not a graphic designer. So how we use those two different functions might differ quite a bit. Master function is only available in hue saturation. This is something that you do not have control over inside of selective color. So if you wanted to control the color of all the colors at the same time, you would definitely have to use hue saturation. Now the first option that we have up here is hue and hue is letting us change the color of a color. So if we wanna change the color of a color, we can slide this around and it's gonna change the color of the colors that we have inside of the image. Now one thing that should be noted, just because this is yellow doesn't mean that it's 100% yellow and this is orange. You're gonna see some red and some yellow in this image and you're gonna see some red and some yellow inside of this image. It's gonna be predominantly yellow, but when you're adjusting colors, just because the color here matches over here doesn't mean that it might not have some other colors in that make up that color inside of the image. The next thing that we have is saturation. Saturation allows you to desaturate a color or increase the saturation of the color. This is something that selective color does not have. This is actually one of my favorite functions inside of hue saturation because what happens is Photoshop interpolates a lot of colors when it takes photos. When you shoot in bad lighting, a lot of time you get an oversaturated color, usually yellow or red. And this will allow you to desaturate that color so it doesn't look so bad inside of an image. This happens a lot on portrait skin colors where you can get an excess amount of red or maybe an excess amount of yellow. The next section that we have down here is lightness. So lightness is allowing us to brighten all the colors or darken the color. Now after master, it allows us to come into an individual color and we can come into the red and we can come into red and where anything that has red in the image, we can adjust that color. So you can see there's more than one color adjusting. Well, because some of these colors have more than one color. So they have red. If we need to isolate just a specific egg in this case, we would need to make a selection or a mask around that if we don't want it to affect other images. But this is allowing us to change the color of the color. Sometimes the colors we get aren't exactly right and we just kind of need to slightly shift that color to where it should be. Once again, we can change the saturation, which is not in selective color, and then we can change the lightness, which is in selective color. Now another trick that we have inside of hue saturation is what's called colorize. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select colorize and you can see colorize is letting us 
adjust or select the color of everything in the image. So we're saying we want to make this image, we want to colorize it and make it any specific color. Now I can come in here and adjust all these settings to get all kinds of different colors. And this is giving us sort of a monochromatic colorized image inside of Photoshop. Now this is something that you cannot do inside of selective color. When you are inside a specific color, you also get a range slider. So you can see we're in reds, so it's picking the reds. You can control the range of colors that you have. If you look down here, this color in red actually goes into the oranges and yellows. I can slide this and I can slide this side so, and I can slide the center one and slide this center one. And what I'm doing is saying, the reds, I really want them to be red. I don't want it to be magenta or I don't want it to have a little yellow or orange. Now, when we adjust that color, it's more narrowly focused on just the red colors and not the magentas, orange and yellows. So you can control that range and you can shift this kind of anywhere that you wanna shift it. Now it's set for red because we picked the color red. If we go to blue, you're gonna see it shift over here to the blues. So we have this range selector inside of hue saturation that lets us control that so we can extend that or make it a little bit more narrow. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off hue saturation. We're gonna come up here to selective color. Now, selective color looks very similar. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is relative versus absolute. Relative and absolute color are just the ways in which Photoshop renders a color. It's either doing it by the process of using relative or absolute. Some people prefer absolute, prefer relative. They're both generating colors. It's just the way in which they do it. If you don't know what it means, don't really worry about it. I just leave it by default at relative color. The first thing that we'll notice here is we have reds, yellows, greens, blues, cyan's, and magentas, just like in hue saturation. But we also have the addition of white, neutrals, and blacks. Now, selective color is letting us adjust the color. So I can come in here and go into the reds and I can start adjusting the color of the reds. What selective color does is let us have more finite adjustments over the color. What I'm doing is actually adding more cyan or more red in this case. So in this case, I can add more cyan or I can add more red to this image. However, I can also control the greens and magentas inside of it, as well as the yellows and the blues. So I'm able to add cyan, magenta, and yellow to just the reds. Then I can control the brightness of that so I can make it brighter or darker. Now notice there's no hue saturation color adjustment inside of selective color. Now, what this is really doing is giving us, notice we're not really shifting yellow to a completely different color. We're just slightly changing the way the yellow is sort of achieved in this image. Notice we're not going from blue to green to red like we could in hue saturation. We're just changing the amounts of these colors inside of the yellow to make that yellow a little bit different yellow color than what we had before. What's different about selective color is if we come down here to the whites. And this has to go with whites, grays, and blacks. So we'll just actually do blacks because I think it will be easiest to see because we have a lot of black on this image. Unlike hue saturation, you can change or add color to black. So I can come in here and make the black a different color by adjusting these sliders. So I can come in here and start sliding this and starting to make my black colors have color in the black, which is something that you can't do. Now I can also make it lighter or darker, just like I did before. So I could actually make this green, but then make it so dark that it just becomes black again, which would kind of defeat the purpose. I can also come in here to whites and I can start to shift my whites around. I don't really have a lot of white values in here, so we're not gonna see a lot of adjustments. So those are the main differences between hue saturation and selective color. The best way to get a better understanding of which one you should be using and when is to just play around with them and practice. 
Usually for most photos, if I'm trying to remove oversaturated or slightly shift the color, I'm using hue saturation. Or if I want a lot of control over a specific color, I tend to use selective color. I tend to use hue saturation 90% of the time and selective color maybe 10% of the time. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.